In the physical world, bodies interact with each other through contact. It's an important yet easy to ignore phenomenon because it's so common. Without contact, a baseball player cannot use the bat to change the baseball's direction of motion. Without contact, a skier cannot be supported and he or she would just drop into the snow. Without contact, force cannot be transferred between objects and the world won't be the same as we understand it. In fact, contact not only transfers force, it also exchanges energy through heat, and we refer to this type of contact as thermal contact. It's a crucial phenomenon to consider when two bodies transfer heat through conduction. With thermal contact, the energy from the heating coil can be transferred to the pot to boil water, and the heated iron can be used to make a shirt look nice and smooth. Ideally, if two surfaces are in perfect thermal contact, the temperature will be continuous through the interface without an abrupt change. But in practical problems, there is a temperature drop between two touching surfaces. This happens because it's typically not possible to ensure that the two surfaces are perfectly smooth and in contact. Even they seem to be very smooth, on a microscopic level, they can be very bumpy and it's inevitable to have fluid trapped in pockets, which changes the conductivity. The type of fluid can be air or liquid. To quantify the capability of thermal contact in conducting heat, people use thermal contact conductance coefficient, noted as H sub C. Its metric units are watt per kelvin per meter square. If we write Fourier's law for the contact surfaces, we can see that the temperature gradient becomes temperature difference, as there's no thickness involved. Thus, the thermal conductivity becomes the negative of the heat flux divided by the temperature difference and is referred to as thermal contact conductance. In engineering, people sometimes use thermal contact resistance, which is the inverse of the thermal contact conductance coefficient. It can be understood as the resistance to heat flow at the contact interfaces. There are many factors that can influence the thermal contact conductance, like contact pressure, surface roughness, the interface fluid, and the interface temperature. The contact pressure surface roughness may influence the size of the trapped fluid pocket. For example, consider two blocks of copper that have rough surfaces. Initially, the actual area in contact may be smaller than the geometric area because the roughness of the surfaces prevent the material from being in perfect interaction with each other. If we press them together with a large amount of force, the contact area will increase as the copper deform to fill in any voids between the surfaces. However, dependency of contact conductance on contact pressure differs from material types. For two blocks of very hard, brittle materials, like rock, pressing them with high pressure may not vary the contact conductance much. Continuing our previous discussion, it's worth noting that the fluid type and the temperature at the interface may also influence the thermal contact conductance. We can understand this by the fact that the fluid's conductivity need to be considered, and this conductivity may also be influenced by temperature. Whether thermal contact conductance plays an important role or not depends on its application and its ratio to the thermal conductivity of the base material. For example, in the computer chip modules, the thermal contact between the CPU and the heatsink should be strictly controlled to make the thermal contact conductance as large as possible to dissipate the generated heat. For this insulation wall, we don't need to worry about the thermal contact resistance between the wood and the foam too much because the first foam itself has a very high thermal resistance, and second is an insulation problem, and some thermal contact resistance can help the insulation effect and is thus desired. At the end of the lecture, we would like to present a list of commonly used thermal contact conductance between different materials. We can see that the contact conductance is highly influenced by temperature and pressure for these materials. Thus, it's important to note that when looking for thermal contact conductance values of two interfaces, one should make sure the surface treatment, temperature, and the pressure are at correct conditions.